All right, so installing a flywheel and clutch assembly on an engine. So the first few things you want to do here is obviously uh, you want to have your right flywheel for your engine balance. Um, I'm not sure what all engines that pertains to, but on the Fords, you know, um, going through the years of the 302 engine, which we have right here, they changed the balance, so um, you have to use different weights of flywheels. And of course, you want to have your proper motor plate on here for your associated flywheel size. Um, getting to there, if you're moving from an automatic transmission to a manual like I did here, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, install a pilot bearing or you know you're here, it makes good sense uh, to put a new pilot bearing in. And the purpose of this is it just locates the uh, input shaft of the, uh, the transmission and later we're going to use this with our lineup tool with our clutch to get our clutch installed properly. So anyway, um, you know, most of that's pretty simple. Just get yourself a big socket that fits around the uh, outside diameter of the pilot bearing and hammer that on in. And um, and you want to get your, pre or your uh, flywheel on here and your flywheel bolts are arranged or your bolt holes are arranged in such a way where it'll only go on to the engine one specific way again and you want to have your obviously your clutch service facing out because we're going to bolt our clutch to the outside of this so anyway um, I'm pretty much almost done torquing these down again you don't just want to hit them with an impact you want to go through and torque them with a torque wrench so on this particular engine the small block Ford uh, it goes to 85 foot pounds so you want to go in three part increments so far I've gone to 40 and 65 now I'm gonna finish it with 85 and of course you want to go in a star pattern um, what's interesting here is when you're trying to turn this the engines gonna to want to turn that's why most people get tempted to use a gun but I got a breaker bar on the front of the engine so um, I kind of hold it from turning myself so anyway without further ado I'm gonna get these torqued and we'll move on to the tedious part of installing the clutch and how to install it properly all right so I got my torque wrench set to 85 pounds and we're just going to hold both here and this can get pretty difficult again just to be sure all right got those all torqued so we're good to go to move on to installing the clutch we're going to take the uh, torque off my uh, torque wrench here so it doesn't wear it out and we should be good to go now I always recommend that pretty much when you're at this place and if you got any mileage on your vehicle at all that you go ahead and you install um, you know a new clutch a new pressure plate and if you do replace anything um, I highly recommend just to replace everything and the throwout bearing because, you know, it's not super easy to drop a tranny or, in this case, I was working this engine over. So, um, you know, you don't really want to take stuff out and put it back in twice, especially if you rely on the vehicle for daily driving or what have you. So, anyway, I got myself a new clutch here, and uh, this flywheel in particular on this Ford engine accepts two different clutch sizes. It's an 80s Bronco um, an F-150 flywheel so it can take either a 10 inch clutch or 11 inch clutch I'm not really sure why they offered two different clutch sizes because it's always better to have 11 inch clutch I'm sure that was just so that they could in the end charge more for the uh, more heavy-duty clutch but anyway all that aside we're gonna get this thing unwrapped and um, getting ready to put it on here so another benefit here with buying a whole clutch setup or a clutch kit is you get this handy lineup tool which is really nice and definitely extremely important to uh, getting this clutch disc aligned perfectly on the flywheel so that the transmission will go into the splines here because your transmission actually has a splined input shaft on it 
that's going to go um, right through these splines on the clutch plate. So you can imagine it's pretty nice to have that aligned with the engine because the end of the input shaft of the transmission has to go through this pilot bearing. So again, very important. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to uh, mount the clutch up really quick. Uh, most clutches will tell you if it's important um, which side of the clutch needs to uh, go on to the engine. So obviously this says flywheel side so naturally that is the side that's going to be touching the flywheel. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put my lineup tool through here and if I can be coordinated here put it on the end, end of the pilot bearing. So now we see that our clutch is nice and perfectly aligned in our flywheel and now we can get our pressure plate mounted. Alright, so one thing about these pressure plates to remember is that they're extremely heavy and you know some of them have a somewhat complex bolt pattern if you got a lot of bolt patterns on your flywheel. Um, it really helps if you take a permanent marker and make a mark on your flywheel and then make a mark on your pressure plate so that when you lift all this stuff up and you have your clutch on here you can get them lined up. So um, you know I preemptively didn't do this so I pulled the clutch back off and made this mark. So now we're good to go. Um, again you want to make sure that you have all the proper hardware which I do for this particular engine. So I'm going to remove this, we're going to put our flywheel on, and then we're going to lift our pressure plate on there, and we should be fine. Again, you know, it's pretty heavy, kind of hard to hold on to, so um, it'll just help you out if you make that mark. Again, you want to install the uh, actual clutch disc on the side of the flywheel that's marked flywheel side, so that's pretty simple there. Again, you can see that this takes a several hands and some finesse to get this right because that wants to uh, the clutch disc wants to fall out of there so if you can you want to set this all on at once kind of like so careful not to knock the uh, clutch disc down let's get one of these bad boys started And now we can get the rest of these in. It looks like so far we're in good shape. Now this is a new flywheel, new pressure plate, and I'm not gonna lie to you, this is uh, the second time I've kinda had it up here. I mocked it up once, and um, what I ended up having to do, it being a new flywheel, is I had to go through all the uh, threads with a tap here. Some of them just seemed to be galled up for uh, whatever reason, you know, it never had bolts in it, so, um, you know, that's something to consider if you have new parts, just make sure that you have good threads before you get everything, um, before you're trying to locate everything up. So again, I'm gonna get all these on here and then we'll get to uh, drawing them down. All right, so I got her all mounted up here. Now, unfortunately, uh, my camera, I took a picture instead of recording. You know, I guess these things happen. So I'm gonna kind of explain what I did here. Now, with a lot of these clutches, it's really hard to get in here with a socket, you know, and get a torque spec on it. So if you can't, um, you know, you can always just use a regular wrench and run it down. Now, in most cases, I don't advocate for that, but uh, with these setups here, you're kind of fighting the uh, clutch pressure itself as you run it down. As you see, that clutch disc is obviously now held in there um, by the pressure plate, so we can pull that out. Um, and also, you got lock washers, and all this stuff kind of distorts your torque spec. You know, you want to be sensible about it, put a breaker bar uh, like so on your front crank pulley because when you tighten these down, of course, it's going to want to turn the engine. So you want to be able to hold on to that uh, and then torque it down with, um, you know, either a torque wrench if you can get in on those or like I did, I just used a normal wrench with kind of a homemade breaker bar and ran it down to where it's tight. And I've done this numerous times on these small block Ford engines and never had an issue. So, you know, just be sensible about it. You know, torque it down good if you do it by hand, but, you know, don't grill arm it and snap anything off, of course, you know. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, the flywheel's installed on this little roller 302 engine, and I'm going to get moving on to uh, dropping it in my old F100 and uh, slapping the old 5-speed behind it so anyway if that interests you you know i got a whole build series going on this truck but anyway overall that's kind of how to uh install a flywheel and a clutch setup on an engine